I'd like to let you know that I updated that uh, set of recordings on the YouTube channel. So I posted everything that we've done up to today. There are like 20 recordings already in that folder for trigonometry. So I guess it's for your convenience because you can, good morning, you can find these recordings on the uh, YouTube uh, on a list of your emails as well, <clears throat> because those are ones that have exact same files, but it takes a little longer, right? Plus, you can get mixed up and mix something, so I think it's convenient. I number them from 1 through 20, so I hope that be working faster for you. And uh, I'm doing more recordings. I did, I'm doing one today, so all of those will be added later in a couple of weeks or so by the end of semester. So today's plan is to solve triangle and then to finish up with this little chapter eight, because there is only one more section left for us to consider. So let me solve triangle. Let's say if I look at the exercise number 30, for example, if you tried something that you want me to help you with, just let me know. So there are three sides. Looks like longest seem to be here. That's going to be C, which is six. Again, I'm looking at the exercise number 30. Then there are two other sides. A is four and B is three. So we're going to need to solve for the remaining angles. So I guess I'm going to have to use the statement of uh, law of cosines that was a B squared plus C squared minus two times B times C. So always the same angles and then cosine of A also present. So whenever you have side A, then you can find the angle A. And to find the angle A, I can isolate this cosine statement. So I'm gonna have a sum of B squared and C squared and then I'm going to bring the a squared over to the other side. And then I'll divide this by 2bc, right? And that's how we're going to get a value for a cosine. And to get the actual angle a, I'm going to use arc cosine, right? Arc cosine of this expression and the expression is here above, so I could just plug numbers in. So for B, I have three. For C, I have six. And then I subtract A squared, which is four squared, divided by two times B times C, two times three times six. So that's for the A. Then I can analogously find the angle B using, again, arc cosine, but now we're going to have to utilize other two angles, not B, but A and C with squares, and then subtract A squared, so that, oh, B squared, because I'm looking at the angle B, so it will go with a minus, and then divide by two times A times C. And again, I'm going to utilize these numbers given, put them in a calculator. Notice that these numbers will be nice to work with because that's what they're given to me. They don't need to be rounded, of course, and that's why it's going to give me a better answer, closer to what I really need here. So I divide by uh, 2 times A times C, which is 2 times 
four times six. So advice is write out the formula first and then you can plug the numbers in and get yourself the answer. So I go for my favorite scientific calculator called Desmos, of course. That's what I've been using and will use more. And you know, some people already sign up for some other classes that I might teach, that I will teach in the spring semester. So I will keep using the same calculator. So we need our cosine, right? I think this is the best calculator so far I was able to find for free online. So we get a put parentheses around numerator, so it's divided correctly. So go three squared, you could do this in your mind, squared three or six, but I'm just entering them the way they are so you can better see what is going on. But I'm sure you can find your own way to enter things in a calculator. And there's two times three times six. So you can see that after I entered everything the way it was supposed to, I've got approximation for the angle, which looks like 36.6 approximately. No, 36.3, sorry, I should be careful. 0.3 degrees, that's my angle A. 36.3. So angle C and angle B I have to also find. So let's go for B. Now I'm gonna need to slightly change this. So I'm gonna go back, get our cosine and return to main and start entering numerator as a four to the second and plus six to the second power minus three squared. And then you divide this again by two, four and six in denominator. Okay, so I found the other angle. So you can technically find third angle exact same way using law of cosines, but whenever I have two angles, I highly recommend that you utilize the sum, the fact that sum of these three angles and triangle is equal to 180. So that way, I think the formula is much simpler looking because all you need is to take from 180 away 26.4 and 36.3 and also gonna use a calculator i think it'd be probably the most convenient way of doing it and I think the fastest also, because otherwise you will write out the formula again and then plug the numbers and it might take a little longer. So I got this third angle here, it's 117.3. So that's my last angle here, 117.3. Again, it's approximate because I rounded the all till pins. So, well, I guess that's good enough with these approximations. So it looks like problems here are pretty straight forward. And uh, once you done a couple of exercises by solving triangles using these little formulas, I don't think you need to worry much more about doing the same thing again. What you can do is just uh, move on to the farther sections. Oh, here I opened this YouTube channel just to show you there's like 20 recordings already in it. And you can always get there by using the link. I think I put it somewhere or I emailed it to you. Well, anyways, let me know if you need access to it. I can always share it again. So going back to this free textbook, I will scroll down to the next section that deals with areas of triangles and the area was like a base times height right so that was 
old favorite formula. So if you had triangle here given on the picture, then first of all, notice that if you multiply its base, which is somewhere here, base of triangle, by its height, which is here, which is same as height there, you're going to get the area of rectangle. And what they're saying now is that this area is the same as that one. And this area is the same as the other one. So like twice area of triangle is in the rectangle. And that's why we take a half and multiply it by that. So area of triangle is one half times base times height. But what if you don't have a height? What if you're not given the height? Then how could you find the area of this triangle if you are not given that height? But if you have a side, let's say, call it as A, and the angle here that I can call as, say, theta. Well, it turns out that I can consider this little triangle to be able to pull out height. And we already did this once when we looked at the law of sines. So if I know the opposite side <coughs> and the uh, hypotenuse for this right triangle, I hope you can see that this is opposite. It's kind of hard. I wrote it a little bit unusual. The opposite, I need to write it a little bit more careful. Opposite then sine of this angle theta is defined as quotient of opposite <laughs> over hypotenuse, right? which is a h over a. And from here, I can pull out the h, just multiply by a both sides. So I can say a times sine of theta is equal to that height. So instead of height, I can put a times sine of theta. And I get the formula that this section is using for all of the exercises, pretty much. So in this little formula, we have ability to find <coughs> area if we know two sides and angle in between. So if you're given side A and side B, and if you're given angle in between, then all you do is just multiply half by those two sides by sine of angle in between. And it doesn't truly really matter if sides you call as BC, then you multiply by sine of angle in between, which is A. Or if sines are AC, then the angle in between will be whatever remaining letter is like uh, B. And also if you have the other two sides like B and C, then sign will be of A. So it looks like these are standard kind of three formulas that we encounter, but it's really one. It says multiply the length of each sides by the sign of angle in between and you can name those sides any way you like. So I can do one exercise and you can see right away that this is pretty straightforward procedure to find the area if you're given what you need, of course. So here they give me a triangle. I can make a picture of it. So side A is three. Side B is equal to four. And angle C in between is 40 degrees. Okay, so they want an area. So let's give them that area, which is going to be, again, one half times side A and side B, and the sine of angle in between, just like that. So 
looks like it's just a calculator time. Oh, I better put angle not 40, but C, right? So the sides and angle always going to have different uh, letters for them. And when I replace uh, 3 instead of A and 4 instead of B and get sine of C, I say, oh, I can cancel 4 and 1 half. You can, but you still need a calculator because sine of 40, I guess there's not much you can do about, right? That's why I'm going to go to the scientific calculator once again and give them this nice answer. So one half, or I can put 0.5, or if you like, you can go one half. So times three and times four, and then multiply this by a sine of <clears throat> 40 degrees. Notice it's all automatically in terms of degrees. So we produce in our answers the way we're supposed to. And they say round to nearest two decimal places. So you can say this is approximately equal to 3.86, right? And since it's area, sometimes people say square units because it's little squares that people use for the area. It's good to realize that areas we get in terms of little squares or mm -hmm. so-called square units, right? So I think all problems in this little section are the same when you have this sites and uh, how about problem number 23? So when you have size and angle in between them, definitely they are the same. But in exercise 23, you don't have this three units, such as angle in between and two sides. You just have all three sides. So what can be done in order to find the area if you have three sides? Well, it turns out you just need to find the angle in between, and I can utilize for that matter the formula I just used in the previous exercise so-called law of cosines I can leave it here the way it is so we produce the formula that enables us to find let's say angle a which is going to be arc cosine just look above b squared plus c squared and minus a squared divided by 2bc, right? So an exercise like 30 or 23, they gave us three sides, a, b, and c. So let's get them. a is 5, b is 8. Well, it's not precise. I should have switched to be closer to reality, but it doesn't truly really matter. Our goal is to be able to find the angle A first. And then when I know the angle A, then I can find the area of that triangle, which is going to be a one half product of B and C multiplied by sine of that angle A. Like say, why A? I want to find angle C. It is up to you. You can find any of these angles. Let's say I started with A, and then I will use it to find my area. So to get A, I'm going to use this formula of law of cosines. So let's plug some numbers in. See, with formulas it's always very straightforward that's what you have when you take science classes let's say you take physics it's just formulas and you plug numbers in the formulas that's why you know how to do one exercise you know how to do all of them but uh, they make you memorize formulas for some reason that's uh, like a specific of some of these classes but uh, 
I don't make you memorize any formulas. You can just write them down since we have all the exams in the format of take home. So I have no control over what you're using and what you're memorizing. But it's a good idea to have access to be able to find formulas that you need. Because then you just plug things in your calculator. And that's another thing about those science classes. You should have a good calculator like the one that I'm using right now, for example. And with that calculator, I'm sure you will do all calculations correctly, right? So minus five squared, and that's a parentheses. So I would say this section is analogous to those science classes where you have formulas that don't look very attractive, but the calculators, they don't care. You just put numbers in, you give yourself the answer. So it looks like there'll be about 33.6 degrees, right? So I found the angle A, first step. And then for the next step, I'm gonna use this formula to get the actual answer to get my area. <clears throat> which is gonna be a one half, now multiplying sides B and C. So that'd be eight and nine. And the sine of this 36, uh, 33.6, or if you want, you can get it more accurate if you just don't round, but take this whole thing and enter, but I guess it's fine. So let's do this, 0. 0.5 times eight and times nine, and then multiply it by the sine of 33.6. So again, classes like physics or engineering classes, or you encounter chemistry classes with lots of formulas, well, they're all pretty much on the same level. You plug numbers in the formula, and you get yourself the answer. 19.92, dot, 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 and that's your area. So <clears throat> I guess that's not much extra I can say about this section. There is so-called Heron's formula that could have been used instead of this one to calculate, but I don't think it's much shorter and it just brings you totally different areas. So I just disregard it. So this concludes pretty much the chapter that we worked on for a while chapter eight so next time we're gonna start looking at chapter nine today i don't want to give you a quiz today i'd like to ask you to please do student evaluations for this class uh, you probably noticed that for pretty much all classes you take in our college at the end of semester they ask you to do this evaluations and that's what I guess we should do today. And I'm not gonna be present when you do this because that's intimidation of students, they say. So you just wanna go to the emails because I received a recently email. I can show you where I found it. It went to my other mailbox and it's called MDC student feedback. So that's the one that you probably also have in your other mailbox. It's called MDC Feedback. I got it on the 7th, so it's been a while. It's been actually a week ago, but it said that the evaluation start like on like last uh, Thursday or so, or Friday. So if you can please find that email and click on it, then I'm sure that's going to bring you to the uh, place where the evaluation for this classes, as well as for your other classes that you are taking this semester, pretty much for all of them. So I'm going to stop the recording and let you find this little 